hear you. Ancient Archer too, where's it at? What's the update? We can talk about it. Let's talk about it. I've been working on Ancient Archer too a lot. Let me just let me just show you. It's current state on GitHub. All right, we're gonna go ahead and launch it here. So uh, shadows, that's what I wanna talk about first. We're gonna go in some little steps here. All right, so we're gonna go to the unit tests and just run the sunlight shadows test. Let's go ahead and run this. Oh no, I'm in the middle of building material stuff and it's something's broken. So we're just gonna have to comment out some code, mainly that line. Okay, so that's not ready yet. And here we have a little sunlight shadows test. So I'm gonna make this bigger and we're gonna fly around a little bit. Some base fly controls here. And as you can see, there is a shadow from this man. It looks pretty jagged, but that's fine. We can we can play around with that. And there's another one. So this is a directional light shadow. And uh, the directional light took a lot of tweaking. I'm gonna talk a lot about these little tweaks because I couldn't really find it documented. I just had to, a lot of these things I just had to think of and test and implement and see how it went. So I'll talk about them and uh, maybe they're useful. Maybe I uh, people already know this and I'm just reinventing the wheel. I'm not really sure to be honest, uh, but I had to do a few little hacks to get it to play nice um, in a more like worldwide scope because you can do a little local scene with shadows, but if you're moving around in like a big area, you gotta like have the light kind of follow you. And I'll talk about that a little more, not technically follow you, just pseudo follow you. So these shadows actually render because one of the problems I had was, well, I wanted to figure out how to get the shadows within a render distance. And as you can see, you can back out of the render distance here and the shadows go away. So what is happening here is the shadows are only rendering around the camera. So basically what I had to do is take the position of the camera and uh, basically draw around it in a kind of hacky way. All right, so let's talk about these little jaggies and then stuff. So we have a light direction. We can play around with that just to confirm it updates. And it, it does, we have that all updating as it should be as it changes. So it all seems to work pretty well. And the light is directly above. If I flip it to directly down below, everything should go completely dark because uh, the light's underneath. Uh, and we can, we can bring it back up. There we go. All right, and we can play with the ambient. So the ambient doesn't cast shadows. In fact, if we turn the diffuse completely off and turn the ambient all the way up, we'll see that it's just plain old lighting, no shadows or anything. That's the way ambient's supposed to work. So it's a cool thing you can play with. I usually, I don't know, it depends, depends on your scene but i like to keep it really low and just use mostly diffuse that's really cool for like really dark areas but if there's a lot of natural light ambient goes higher you know but that's up to your scene so we're gonna mainly look at diffuse specular does some things too but it's not super noticeable you can kind of see it it basically if these have specular textures it will use them if they don't it's basically ignored um all right so render shadows we can toggle this on or off and here is the shadow settings that you can uh, play with other than the lights because this first section is like the lights and this is like the, the render settings so you have a shadow far plane this is basically how far it renders this seems to be pretty good if it's about your render distance well i don't know for sure i was playing around with it, it seemed like 750 was a pretty good number or what I was doing. Now these biases, these control the offset of the shadow a bit. And uh, yeah, so you can kind of adjust those. They seem better when they're very low in general. And now these jaggies, little jaggies, this ortho size will change that. I think I defaulted it to something huge. It wasn't actually 50. It was probably like 500. I think it was 500 actually. Um, I just don't have this uh, ortho size thing hooked up. 100% correctly apparently but you can see you can adjust it to something that looks good for your scene and uh, yeah that's a very sharp looking shadow but then it doesn't render as far so you got to have some balance here and and play with some things because your ortho size is bigger it can render from further but they're not as sharp so you could have this auto adjust based on how far you are from things I don't know there's stuff like that you could do it could get very, way more complicated is the point I'm getting to. But in general, we have some settings. We can play around with them for our any given scene and set what's best for that. So it's uh, they're functional and that's basically, it's basically all they are. It's functional. So that's the uh, sunlight shadows or directional light shadows. I'll show a little bit of the code based around some of the more unique things I did. So most of this involves the, the shader that it's using and that shader code and the render process or render graph I'm going through for rendering shadows basically uh, as long as there is a directional light it starts setting up things and then it also checks and makes sure that it actually has shadows and the objects that are in the scene actually want to render shadows because you can toggle it off per object as well 
and if that is all true it sets it up for the shader given the uh, light space matrix the jumping off point from this i'll just show you real quick just in case you want a good getting started point. It was this site right here. I went through this tutorial to get a base understanding. Uh, I had to read it several times. There are definitely a lot of things to shadows and you can't cover them all in one article, but this is pretty good. It gets into a lot of details. Um, and then I just had to adapt it to my particular engine and setup and, and all that and how I'm doing my shaders. So it I had to adjust some things and I had to I learned a few things too like the shadows on that tutorial are for a very small scene so you really got to get in there and play with the ortho size and stuff for your scene and also and when we do the render shadows we pass in a view pause and this view pause is the camera that you're looking from it's that position and the only thing it really wants this for is for this look at because um this is what keeps it rendering around you basically and i don't know this is kind of a hack so basically you know the light direction for this sunlight it's just a, a tiny little vector from one to zero basically and normally just sits at this very center of your scene you know between zero and one coordinates uh, so we scale it up by 200 and we also add it to our view pause so that keeps it relative to where we're at in that way it's uh, for all these other calculations it keeps the shadows actually rendering around us so that is the point of that and uh, also adjust the center to us so the light is basically always relative to us now obviously it's not 100 percent correct technically for a sunlight and it's more of just a hack to keep the shadows for the directional light specifically rendering around us and not way off somewhere in the scene where we can't even see um, and I, I don't know, I don't think I found that info anywhere. I just kind of like determined that that was a thing I should do and implemented it. So it seems to be okay. Uh, yeah, a lot of trial and error, but uh, let me know. Is anyone else doing that? Or do you have a different solution for keeping the directional shadows rendering around you? And now let's talk about the shader. I have a shader in here just called Uber Shader. It basically does all the core stuff. It has a kind of a default render, um, setup that should generally work for just about everything so it's uh it's kind of like the default one and uh i do plan on later adding some specialized ones or allowing support for people to add their own but currently in everything defaults to this uber shader so this uber shader basically handles uh all a textured up object and all the lights and all the shadows and some reflection models and we're going to add to it as we go like we're going to put hdr in here and later we're also going to be adding uh, materials that aren't from sampler 2ds but are just colors because that's another workflow that gets used and generally for a lot of this stuff we just have toggles or whether it has certain things and that's used uh, down below in the shader to do the calculations so that there is the fragment or pixel shader but there's also all the uh the, the vertex shader stuff too and here's the light calculations for the directional light which uh has the shadows right here uh that's basically all we're doing and that's uh, i think most of this code is from that learn opengl i did modify some things and do it my own way a little bit just had to really think about this light direction a lot and uh just make sure you're doing what it, you think it does uh, there's the end of the function but uh, I think that's about it for the directional shadows. You saw how they look. I'll run one other test that has a bunch of them in there. I don't think I have as many settings adjustments set up for it. Here we go. Let's try this one. Lighting tests. Okay, here we go. Here's the lighting test. There's actually a thing in here I forgot to do, and that was animate the animate the whatever change the vertices before get the new matrix for this animation and pass it to the shadows i forgot to do that and actually that brings up another good point of something else i need to do so these calculations for all of these animations are all currently done on the shader and that's kind of okay in some ways but if we ever want to get the position of this mesh and where things are going which will be relevant when we add physics and colliders later uh, we actually want to do these calculations on the CPU. So I think what I'm going to end up doing, or optionally, we can move them to a compute shader, I believe. So if we do all these uh, calculations for the animations on the CPU or a compute shader, then what we can do is uh, pass that to all the shaders. So we can pass it to the shadows so it'll get the shadows right. And later we can uh, also have that info available to the physics. So uh, I think we are going to have to move these calculations off of that vertex shader and that's when we'll fix the shadows so that's going to happen a little later that's why i haven't done it yet just because i haven't done that but that is the plan and this is just another test scene uh, this scene has a sun and it also has uh, a bulb or point light and it also has a flashlight which is stuck to the camera so uh i had this scene from last episode but 
if I turn down all the lights, turn off the sunlight and the specular, it's kind of interesting with just specular, but yeah, let's turn it all off. Now I defaulted them to 0 0.003, so there's a tiny bit of light and you can see emission textures. Those are still working great. The guy's got an emission texture on them. All right, so let's turn up our flashlight. Whoa, not that much though. That's a bit much. There we go. Wait a second, I got something hooked up wrong, because look, when I move this flashlight, it moves the sunlight. Oops, okay, I need to fix that. I might have been a, a, a mass name replace operation that changed both names. I don't know, but I need to fix that uh, real quick, because uh, now I'm going to look like a goober. One sec. Okay, what's going on here is an I am gooey thing, and it's kind of weird, so I'll talk about it real quick. And basically, we're just doing, you know, it's I'm using a very simple version of I am gooey. I'm not really doing anything too fancy, but... What it does is it uses this label, and if you have the same label in several places, they seem to occasionally lock together and uh, weird things happen. So, um, we're going to have to give them different names. Uh, I guess I'll just put an S after this. I don't know. Let's see if it likes underscore S. Oh my goodness, why so laggy? So, I'm just going to throw some of those in there and uh, call it a day. Alright, changed all that. Let's hit play again and see what happens. Are they still locked together? It appears not. Okay, very good. So, but these ones still are. Oops, uh, let's rename some more. We'll just put an underscore P on these ones or point. So yeah, that's a thing. Gotta watch them labels and I am gooey or else. All right, let's see how we're looking now. So let's turn down all the lights except for our flashlight. And let's turn that to pretty bright. All right, so we can walk around with our flashlight, and it's kind of like we're in like a, a dark cave or something, you know? You can do this sort of effect. I, I've still been trying to get it to actually look like a proper flared uh, flashlight. It's been hard to get that right, but uh, maybe it'll look, that'll come along with the HDR stuff. But for now, um, yeah, with this kind of setting, it's kind of cool because I don't know if you can see it too well on the actual screen. depends on your brightness. But once we get really close, you can see, and... Uh, I don't know, I've always tried to adjust it to be like a thin beam, but that seems to be really hard to do. How do you make this a thin beam? Because uh, I have it like as bright as I can get it. I guess I could I could turn down this linear and quadratic a lot and see what happens there. Uh, but I only have it to 0 0.0001 right now. And that should be pretty, or carry pretty far. But uh, yeah, like that right there should be a tiny beam. Let's see if we can see it on this guy maybe. No, no beam. Nothing. All right. I'm trying to get a little dot. Maybe. I don't know. It's not a little dot. It's like a big glow. Anyway, the flashlight does work, but how do people get that little bright center cone in their screen? Do I just need more objects with more reflections in the scene? I don't know. That's something I'll have to address later, but it doesn't really matter. The point is uh, we have all the lights working because now we can uh, turn off the flashlight or turn it way down at least and turn on this little spotlight, which is this rendered starting at this cube. So you can just kind of follow it around if you want. It might be hard to see on this screen. Maybe I should turn up uh, the diffuse a bit. I don't know. I could mess with this a lot. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see everything, but the point is the three core lights work. I still need to do shadows for the point and the flashlight, but uh, not too worried about that right now. I'm going to do materials first. And uh, you know, you got to take it one thing at a time, but shadows and lighting have been the big focus yet again. So that has generally been my focus. I didn't spend as much time on this as I did the previous month, but I'm pretty happy with uh, how the shadows are, are looking there. And the other thing I did this month was I initialized this editor. So um, I'm not sure exactly what the scope of this editor is going to be, but I basically just want a little test zone that I can load up blank and kind of, um, I don't know, just use some of the tools in. So I'm working up that system. It is very primitive and hello worldish right now, but I'll go ahead and run it and show you what I got. So basically there's this just launches in a, uh, a blank. AA editor window and it turns on a drag and drop feature so you can drag and drop the items that it supports. So uh, for example if I go to my uh, giant E drive here scroll down past my dogecoin uh, scroll up past my dogecoin and go to asset pack I have a bunch of 3d models and various things so uh, you should be able to drag in models uh, right now and that's the only thing I put in here so far I still got to do properties panes and uh, little widgets to move them around but I'm going to load in this guy and uh, if we go back to Visual Studio here, we'll see that its memory's going up and up and up as it does its thing. And there he goes, okay. And he's in there. I also did add a default fly camera. 
so you can get around the scene. You can see uh, how the model loader works for any particular model. Just load them right in. He looks really creepy. Um, but yeah, you can uh, really get a look. Shadows should be on by default as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to need to get some property panes up somewhere to adjust things and add things and basically give you an idea of what you're doing. But uh, yeah, this is, like I said, very hello worldy. Let's go ahead and load in something else um, just to make it fill out a little bit. I got this little test ground and I'll throw in there real quick and you can see the shadows. So everything just centers when you throw it in there. I do need to get the widgets. I can't remember what they're called, but basically just some things to move, scale, rotate, transform. All that's in the engine. I just need to add some more stuff for this editor. But then like, what's the point of the editor if you can't even save your work? So it's a whole big project on its own and I'm debating whether it's really worth going down the editor road because the reality is I don't have time to do it all. I need to pick a thing I want to work on most and uh, keep in that direction. I'll iterate on the editor, I just don't know how fast it's going to come along. And uh, currently working on materials as of right now, getting those supported and uh, trying to find the time. So uh, in other news and uh, in what's going on, I'm moving. So I've been prepping to move um, locations. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all I'm going to say about it. So it's been keeping me a little busier than usual and a lot of family life stuff. And I think, you know, I, I know I say this all the time, but I really want to make a game. I'm basically making this engine to support a game I want to make. And uh, it's something I've also been iterating on to the design of. And uh, there's several games. So I don't know if I'm going to focus on the game, the editor, or the engine, or a little bit of all three. But it's probably just going to be a little bit of all three. And uh, yeah, I appreciate your guys' support. I'm not sure what else to, to say about all that. I don't want to give big spoilers and say too much and then be like oh yeah i decided not to do that or something you know i appreciate you guys thanks for watching the video good luck with all your coding stuff and uh yeah if you want to talk more code join the discord or sign up on patreon or something i'll be in touch peace out guys messing with some materials this is the next phase so more render options and more render fun